That did not just happen. No. <laughs> Please tell me that didn't just happen. <laughs> Crap, I keep messing that up. <clears throat> My bangs look awful. No, they don't. You look perfect. Hi there, my name is Sherry, and I recently made a video about panic attacks. So if you haven't seen it, please click somewhere over here before watching this. Otherwise, none of this is really going to make a whole lot of sense. Hi, I'm Tammy, and I played the main character in this film. Sherry is in Spain, so I am helping with this commentary overseas, and hopefully when we edit it all together, it doesn't get too choppy and it'll all make sense. So panic attacks can be quite a touchy or serious topic, so I do feel compelled to make a whole separate video talking about why I might be qualified to even talk about the subject. I had my first panic attack earlier this year, and the experience was really terrifying for me because of all these misconceptions that are floating around out there. Before this, I had had what I thought was a panic attack, but was really just a lot of nerves and anxiety from a particularly strenuous period in school. It wasn't until I had a real panic attack that I even really knew what they actually were. And I hope to clear this up for at least a few people who are watching so that maybe you can avoid having the same experience I had. I didn't know what was happening to me, and it was really scary. By some estimates, over 40 million Americans suffer from panic attacks, so if I could prepare just one of you, then all of this will have been worth it. I thought I was dying and I was home alone and I very nearly called my roommate to come home and take me to the hospital. I didn't realize until after what had actually happened. Since then, I have done a fair amount of research on the topic and I also have to mention that I don't have panic attacks regularly. So that, I feel, gives me an objective view while also knowing what it's like having been there once before. And that is why I feel qualified to make a narrative video about this. I too have had panic attacks. I'm also a licensed therapist and I work with children and adolescents who suffer from anxiety, depression, other mental health issues. As Sherry said, you don't need to have a history of mental illness to have a panic attack or experience any of those similar symptoms. There are a lot of things you have to understand about panic attacks. It's different from anxiety. Panic attacks can occur at any time, can be completely unprovoked, and the onset is very, very sudden. I was sitting at home alone in my PJs watching Netflix on a Sunday afternoon when I had my panic attack. And I thought, I'm not panicked about anything. Nothing happened, there was no trigger. But what I didn't understand was that, while not always, these things can happen that suddenly. And I hope that suddenness came across in the beginning of the video. I wanted to show Tamara talking perfectly content to her friend, and then in the seconds after she exits and before I come in, um, that's when she starts to panic. What's surprising to many people is how physical an affliction it really is. It's not mind over matter. While it's a good idea to remove yourself from the situation if you're in a crowd or at a party, it's not gonna make you stop panicking. The only thing to do is wait. The most common physical symptoms are increased heart rate, sweating, and the inability to catch your breath. I sat on my couch uncomfortably for about 15 minutes breathing as though I'd just run a marathon without stopping. I really wanted to illustrate this in the video by showing Tamara, the main character, um, trying again and again to take herself out of the situation that she thought was making her panic. You all right? I just, I think I need some air. Okay, all right, I'll see you later. So she tries to get away from everyone by going outside and there are people there. She tries to go to the bathroom and suddenly someone needs it. Um, and then this all comes to a head in the end, when she tries to go into her room alone and she ends up actually just coming in through another door and entering in the party. Really what I wanted to show there was just that you can't get out of it, you can't escape it. It's inevitable. It's hard for people to understand if they've never been there. As much as they want to help, telling people to breathe or to calm down really isn't helpful and it might even exacerbate their panic. And I say that as someone who has been that person telling someone to calm down and breathe and also as that person being told to calm down. And I really hope that comes across in the different interactions Tamara has throughout the video. People are seemingly insensitive, but in reality, they just don't understand. Shh, okay, breathe, 
please breathe. Okay, tell me what to do. I don't know what to do. Another thing I wish I'd known is that your digestive system completely shuts down. It might be awkward for me to talk about, but I think it's really important that people know what's potentially happening to their bodies. I, for instance, thought I had a urinary tract infection. That's, that's what it felt like. And UTIs also have a similarly fast onset. It, again, it wasn't until later that I realized that this is actually a really common physical symptom of panic attacks. I think it's really important for people to know, and it's definitely a lesser known symptom, um, but I did not include this in the video for obvious reasons. <laughs> so let's review. Different people have different triggers, like crowds or loud noises or bright lights. But panic attacks do not need to be triggered by anything. They can happen completely unprovoked, and the onset is very quick. Physical symptoms can include hyperventilation or heavy breathing, increased heart rate, sweating, and a sore stomach from a shutdown of the digestive system. Unfortunately, while you can remove yourself from the stressful situation, sometimes there isn't a stressful situation for you to remove yourself from. What this means is, there isn't much you can do apart from just waiting for it to pass. If you're witnessing a panic attack, it may seem pretty helpless. And while you may have the best of intentions telling someone to calm down or to breathe, it probably isn't helping, and it may come off as insensitive or condescending. As a friend, and not the person panicking, there isn't much you can do apart from just being there to support the person, avoiding oversimplified advice, and just Wait, sounds pretty hopeless, doesn't it? Well, it doesn't have to be. If you're a panic attack sufferer, you should acknowledge your anxiety and recognize that you're having a panic attack. This may sound easy, but if you don't know the symptoms or haven't experienced a panic attack before, you might very well think you're dying. You're not. You're panicking. Practice deep breathing to slow the hyperventilation. Use cognitive distractions, such as counting backwards from 100. And these things do take practice, but don't ever forget that you can ask for help at any point. And don't feel like you're a failure if you need to go and see someone. If you're on the other side of the situation, the very first thing you need to do is understand what the other person is going through. Their body is preparing for a false fight or flight response, so much so that they're not in control anymore. So it's useless to tell them that there's nothing to worry about. Another way you can help is just by knowing the symptoms. Many people don't. If it's their first panic attack, they might not know what's happening. So if they start worrying about imminent death, heart attacks, or in Sherry's case, a UTI, without being condescending, calmly tell them that they're having a panic attack and it will pass in the next 15 minutes or so. Those 15 minutes may seem excruciating. Be there, support them, hold their hand, rub their back, and of course, when in doubt, seek medical attention. Okay, I hope that helps. I hope you enjoyed my video and maybe you learned a few things. I have included some links and resources in the description below with information and tips on how to deal with panic attacks and everything you could ever want to know. One of those resources is NAMI, National Alliance on Mental Illness. If you go to their website linked below, they have tons of resources and information. If you're looking for some help or someone to talk to, the American Psychological Association, linked below, has an extensive list of providers and resources in which you can get in contact with. And one last thing before I go. I have been asked on more than one occasion if I'm going to be donating the proceeds from this video, and in the interest of full disclosure, no, I'm not. Um, I don't monetize any of my videos and Furthermore, I don't have a big enough audience to make more than about 30 cents per video. So, so unfortunately, I will not be donating any proceeds because there are no proceeds to donate. But fear not, I have taken the liberty of including some donation pages to some great mental health organizations and mental health awareness campaigns. So thank you all for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.